This video is brought to you in partnership with Gamersubs. Use code JAZZY for 10% off your next order. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am a massive sucker for a good classic 80s action film. Predator, Terminator, I love them all, but especially Robocop. So you can imagine my delight to hear that we were getting a new Robocop game that apparently was getting fantastic reviews. I knew instantly that I'd buy that for a dollar. So that's exactly what I did and now it's time to see if the hype is really worth it by grinding all 27 achievements that the game has to offer. So without further ado, it's time for trouble. So let's begin. Welcome to the Achievement Grind. The game begins with a news broadcast. Casey Wong tells us all about the, well, the news. Submarines have been found, people are dead, you know, the usual. However, before he can properly get into it, Sup breaks his way in and decides that he is now in charge of the news. In Quen Suocha informs the new guy in town that his gang is available for your next Christmas party, whether it be from copious amounts of nuke, the local drug of choice, or by killing a police officer live by giving them an overdose, you know, the usual. Well, as you can imagine, we need to stop this, and Robocop is now on the scene. Honestly, he looks fantastic. Now, Lewis is still our partner just like the film, and she is already here tending to the injured, but with another man meeting a rather violent end, it's time to take this gang down, so we enter. We then immediately get a feel to the gameplay of Robocop. Oh, and we also have our first achievement, as when I expertly shoot a man in his entire cock and balls, we unlock Zip This Up. And honestly, I am so proud that that was the first achievement that I unlocked. However, with a man's man down, we are on the board. Time to save these non-robo humans, and honestly, folks, the gameplay, as I just said, is fantastic. The shooting feels incredibly smooth and responsive, the ragdoll physics are perfect, and the movement is a lot cleaner than you might expect. 30 seconds in, and I was already really enjoying myself. But enough faffing, it's time to help. We slowly start to rise in the skyscraper, tearing people apart limb from limb on the way up. It was super satisfying. However, in the next room, we also have our next achievement, as on the desk is a monitor. And personally, I think this monitor would be a great addition to one of the thugs' brains. So we introduce them to it and unlock another achievement as well, Strike Out. A couple of minutes later though, it's time to breach a door and save some hostages. In super slow-mo, we expertly take down parts of the gang without any civilian injuries, a complete success. However, this isn't the only group of people that need help, so we carry on. And surprise, surprise, folks, it's time for another achievement, as further on is a petrol tank and a very nice huddled group of enemies. Again, we decide to introduce them to each other. When it explodes, killing more than three of them, we then unlock Nukem. Finally, folks, we arrive in the main room, and with another breach, we save the hostages in super slow-mo. Well, most of them. On the balcony, however, is another threat. Unfortunately, though, Robocop is incapable of saving her, as we then see the hostage as our wife and totally freeze. Since nobody can quickly turn us off and on again, it is up to our partner Lewis to shoot the torch head and save the final human, which is great. I sure hope there wasn't anybody recording the moment the Robocop froze. Uh well, since Suit wasn't anywhere to be seen though, this Torchhead fight isn't over. However, for completing the first mission in the game, we unlock the next achievement as well, Night Has Just Begun. Back at the Detroit Police Station, we then talk to the officers as well as the slimy Git Max Becker. Unfortunately, Robocop's freezing moment has reached the news and it started to spread doubt in our ability to protect and serve. So to see what happened, we need to go and have our brain scanned a touch. But before we can do that, it's time for some shooting practice as well as our next three achievements. Now, the shooting range is fairly easy, so the points were rapid rapidly racking up. At around the 500 mark, we just decided to call it quits. And for getting above over 150, 200 and 250 points in this minigame, we unlocked the next three achievements, this guy is good, dead on and super cop. Not bad for five minutes work if you ask me, however, back to our brain evaluation. In the next chair, we talk to the slime ball, the doctors as well as the police therapist. They install a new monitoring chip so that we can keep tabs on my wacky moments. I'm sure that won't come to bite us in the future here. Eh? However, in this chair, you also get end of case stats and rankings. And for expertly dealing with the news mission, we achieved a perfect A ranking and unlocked the next achievement as well, Officer of the Month. And honestly folks, I was quite happy with not only the progress but the game itself, so I was ready to carry on and see what else this game had to offer. Now the next mission also surprised me. We just have to patrol the streets of Detroit, just being a generally awesome police officer man. And I was not expecting an open world aspect to this game in the slightest, however, there is much to do, include looking at the most tweaked out cat that I've ever seen. But here we also have the main mission, plenty of side missions, as well as issuing tickets to those who ever so slightly break the law. It wasn't what I was expecting at all, however, I was totally on board. Now of course we're not going to go through everything that we did here, as there is a lot more than you 
you may think. However, we just start our patrol. One of the first things that we see on the street is a car that is leaking. Because of that, they deserve a ticket. And when we give them that ticket, we unlock yet another achievement as well, Uphold the Law. Now, the main mission of this chapter is to simply find out what happened to Soot, as we need to get to him for information on the new guy in town. And honestly, I was having so much fun just walking around discovering all that could be discovered. In doing so, we also saw two fellow police officers who were dealing with a moida. And since there is an achievement tied to this side mission, we offer a helping robo hand. Scanning the victim, we then can see that they have been hit in the brain rather hard. They're covered in blue paint and the perpetrator took off in a heavily altered van. There is also a crazy dude that says that aliens did it. However, with a film set nearby, he might not be as crazy as he sounds. Uh, well, I mean, he's crazy, of course. However, we can still investigate. We make our way to the set and question those at it. The set manager seems fine. However, when we talk to Jerry, the main actor of this advert, he says that the person responsible was his understudy as he is covered in the paint that was on the victim. However, when we find the understudy and question him, he throws the blame right back at Jerry. Finding the understudy, we also find the murder spot and unfortunately, a super secret camera as well. Not really ideal to find a camera like this, but now we can use it to see plain as day that Jerry was the one that killed the poor woman with a rather brutal hammer strike. With that, the blue man is ambulanced and Jerry is arrested for murder. We drag him off, throw him into the car and unlock the next achievement for solving the case, hard boiled. Whilst completing another side mission as well, we raided a garage and also found in it an OCP training disc. A wonderful find as with this we also have our next achievement as well, I'd buy that for a dollar. The next achievement we got before carrying on with the main mission simply has us find a hidden room in the local arcade. People have been getting drugs off the owner and it's quite an entire story, but we just launch him off a balcony instead and find the hidden button under his desk. When we press it we unlock the room and also unlock No Stone Unturned as well. Now, back to Soot. We find out that there's a criminal informant somewhere in the city within the ghost house and if anybody knows where this soot is it's them so we go to rescue them as apparently they are also currently being held hostage just like before we fight through waves of torch heads absolutely shredding them apart with everything that we can throw at them soon we reach the informant and this man is called pickles and will be a dear friend of robocops however for now pickles says that the torch heads are taking residence in a local abandoned slaughterhouse so there is our next destination we and lewis immediately set off there inside it seems rather quiet. However, soon the torch heads emerge and we begin yet another war in which we shoot, explode and quip our way further throughout the building. However, it doesn't all go our way as we soon get squashed by a construction vehicle. I also have to apologise here folks, there are parts in this game in which the frames go to absolute smeg. It's a brand new game so I can forgive it for that as it doesn't happen too much just when there's a lot of fire specifically on the screen. But just to warn you folks that at some points during this video the frames may be less than desirable. Anyway, Lewis once again saves us with quick thinking and we get back to robo work. Thankfully, we eventually find Soot having a bit of a boogie with the rest of his gang. We take care of those that shoot at us until it's just us and Soot alone. However, he isn't giving up any information, not even when we give his neck a rather intimidating squeeze. So with that not an option, we throw him into the corner of the room and proceed to throw every single musical instrument in the room at him. You know, like good police officers do. And eventually, this actually makes him crack. However, when we talk to Lewis, it appears that the new guy has already beaten us to it and has taken a hostage. Apparently, wanting to exchange. We head on outside to meet this smeghead, and he is rather dapperly dressed if you ask me. However, out of all the times possible, we start to glitch and freeze again. It turns out that this man is called Wendell, and he is the brother of somebody that we killed in the first Robocop film. Well, I say we killed, we didn't actually do a thing. His idiot brother drove through a vat of toxic waste and then caught a ride on the front of a car, so I don't know why he's mad at me. But for some reason, he decides to take revenge, or as he says, gives us a gift, and just shoots Lewis on the spot. Now back at the police station, Max and the rest of the people are getting quite concerned or extremely annoyed about our glitches, but we don't care about that as during this cutscene we unlock the next achievement for completing the last mission, unlocking Dead or Alive. Max then sets the therapist to work in trying to get to the bottom of this and after a small talking session we start to make some progress, but we're a long way off a breakthrough, so for now it's back to stopping criminal scum. Well, I say stopping criminal scum, actually we have another achievement, as in this game are skill trees and by unlocking every skill in a specific branch we also gain practice makes perfect. We're not done yet though folks as then we unlock upgrades to our pistol. By unlocking chips we can then put them into our trusty gun to increase things from aiming, stability or damage. And for putting a single chip into our gun we unlock the next achievement in all adds up. Now it's back to stopping criminal scum. Our next stop is the steel mill which is another hideout for the gang called the street vultures so we immediately storm it. When we arrive we are joined by a rather intense greeting as motorbike riders decide to test me. I thank them for this test however as it gives us the perfect chance to shoot the petrol tank on one of their bikes and as you guessed it,
past it, unlock our next achievement, Live by the Bike. Now, honestly, folks, the gameplay is pretty much just the same as before. Not that that's a problem, though, as it is incredibly fun still. I cannot stress how much joy I was actually having throwing bikes at people. However, we delve deeper into the complex looking for answers. During our investigation, we also find the room in which Alex Murphy was horribly killed. It gives us a shake, however, we're ready to carry on. Now, the reason we're here is that a police officer recently went missing, and we think that he is going to be here after some incredible detective work. Our theory is then immediately proved correct when we find a tape of the vultures beating the hell out of this poor officer. Spike is the man in charge of this operation, or he seems to be until Wendell then makes his next appearance. He says that no police officers will come storming this building as he knows people and has put a stop to that, so they're free to work as long as they'd like. Time to follow this trail and find that room. However, before we find that room in question, it's time for an achievement for finding another room in question. It's super well hidden admittedly as you need to interfere with a train to reach it, however with us finding this OCP training disc in a super secret secret hideout, we also unlock Good Eyes Murphy. About five minutes later, we find the torture room and something far more distressing, as there are about 20 to 30 freezers all filled with bodies and having their organs harvested, and unfortunately that includes the tortured officer. Everybody is truly dead, Dave. So with nothing more to do here, we regroup with the officers, and with Max's ED-209 unit as backup, we enter the yard and decide to put an end to this chapter of the gang, whilst also doing some thorough police work, of course. However, in one of the next rooms, we do indeed find Spike, and seeing this is a wonderful catch. We arrest him, and life is looking good again. Or it would be, however, the lion roaring ED-209 unit also freaks out, killing an officer. So we need to take this mammoth down too. Now here is where the frame issues really started to come into play. However, not only that, this mammoth of a device is an absolute pain to take down, and truly is the tank that it appears to be. Attempt after attempt, it got the better of us, as it can absolutely shred your health with bullets and rockets. However, thanks to some wonderful shots and explosives, we chip its health away until finally it goes down for the count. Unfortunately, during this kerfuffle though, Spike did escape. With the mission over though, we unlock our next achievement, 20 seconds to comply, and it's time to visit our partner in hospital hospital who is unfortunately still in her coma. And honestly, Lewis just seems to have the worst luck with bullets, poor woman. She is just getting constantly shot. However, for now, folks, there aren't any achievements that we need other than just playing the main story. So for now, we're just going to go through what happened rather quickly so we can get closer to that delicious gamer score. The next mission is a bank heist. The street vultures are taking their next move and trying to get filthy rich in the process. Admirable. However, with Robocop on the scene once again, the plan won't go that well. For some reason, though, a bunch of ED-209 units follow us into the building as well, helping us paste the vultures into a rather nice pate. We eventually find the vault and the bank manager, as well as a rather enthusiastic Jason fan. Since Jason's not allowed in this IP though, we throw him out of the game and save the bank manager, with Max Becker also being here for some reason. Now unfortunately, the manager has a bomb strapped to him, however since we're feckin' Robocop, we defuse that without a worry in the world and save the day. Now the vultures seem to be quite dense, as this bank actually doesn't have that much money in it. The bank's in Detroit during one of the worst periods of his existence, so there was very little money to begin with, so the small amount that they had has also been taken, so it's just bad news bears for everyone. We pursue the remaining vultures and take them out reaching Spike on the radio. He brags about getting away and with that the mission is over and we get our next achievement as you would not expect, don't mess with the money. For now though, we need to talk to the old man, the CEO of OCP and the big cheese as it were. We bonded for a moment as this old man actually seems rather nice. God, I sure hope he doesn't turn out to be a villain or anything. But for now we just need to patrol the streets again looking out for the little guys, whilst also of course trying to find out where Spike's gone. Our detective skills have us question his local local tattoo artist who instantly gives Spike up, telling us that he is in the city and will be able to see where he is because his bike is just probably parked outside. Genius. And like an absolute moron, the bike is. So we let ourselves in to find that Spike is also not having the best day imaginable. The torch heads got to him and we're just about to put the vulture down. However, with us on the case, we light up the room and save Spike. With him saved and now in police custody, we can now go and find Wendell and hopefully arrest him thanks to some new info saying that he was in the car park of a local abandoned shopping centre, and the info proves correct as Wendell is there conducting business. However, another bastard glitch gives us up and Wendell manages to escape 
once again. By now, however, the glitches are getting extremely bad, almost looking like nightmares. At one point, we even talk to our old 100% human self, and he says some pretty nasty things to us. But somehow, when we shoot ourselves in the face, we wake up with Wendell in our hand. Jobs are good and Wendell says that we shouldn't make an enemy out of him, as he is the only person who can give us our memories back. But we don't care about the past, sod that. He is arrested on the spot, and we can go home. Another shift perfectly executed, unlocking us the next achievement as well, book him. Now, talking to the sergeant again, it turns out that Wendell says that he has an accomplice helping him. We quickly talk about who it could be, and Max Becker is the only obvious choice, because obviously he's slime. However, it's time to visit our partner again, who has thankfully now woken from her coma, and seems to be feeling fantastic already, well, all things considered. But here we also find out that the old man has been admitted as well, and is feeling less than spectacular. He also points us in the direction of Max Becker, who is looking to get rid of Robocop and regular cops, wanting to change the entire police force into droids that he can control. And how fantastic does that sound? Wait, what? Not in the slightest? Oh, well, let's go stop him then. Ironically, we then find him instantly at the OCP warehouse, where Max seems to have come up with a little game for us. He wants us dead, and dead now, so it's the perfect chance for him to show off the very droids that he wants to replace the entire police force with. However, we're the main character here, so we can't be having any of that, and begin to destroy wave upon wave of his precious droid army. Now, herein lies another achievement as well, as we need to clear every single wave within 10 minutes. Now, honestly, that seems fairly easy at first, however, we were soon overrun with droids that had weapons that packed one hell of a punch. However, we don't give up, and Alex Murphy wouldn't do either. Now, a couple of restarts later, and a new strategy of just bombing the hordes of them as they leave their boxes, we soon rid every single one of them, and go to question Max. Now, since the achievement didn't pop, I was extremely nervous that we had failed, and I'd have to do it all over again. However, Max then reveals that this was a test for the mayor to show us how great his bots are. Unfortunately for him, though, he proved the wrong point, and the mayor has now doubled down on how amazing Robocop is. Max, as you'd imagine, is anything but happy about this turn of events, but sod his happiness. It turns out that we did indeed defeat them all within 10 minutes, and unlocked our next achievement, there can only be one. Now, back at the station, the entire force is not happy with Max at all, and we we all go to confront him. It turns out that his robots are now immediately in charge though, and the entire police force is now just simply not needed anymore. Amazing. However, with nothing else to do, we decide to visit Wendell in prison to see if we can squeeze some more information out of him. We then arrive and have a brief chat where he says the name of the program that would restore my memories, and it's called Afterlife. But before anything else can happen, in true cinematic style, a riot breaks out, because of course it does. We fight our way through the prison bit by bit, blasting the absolute hell out of any fool that dare stand in our way. The enemies then eventually turn from prisons to Wendell's private army, because of course he is responsible for this. But never mind that, we smash our way through them as easily as we did anything else, until we reach the edge of the prison wall and we see Wendell on the other side of the gate. We were too late. But not only that, because of course we have another system shut down, so Wendell has the perfect moment to monologue for a bit before escaping. It's not all bad news though folks as for completing this mission we also unlock the next achievement let's talk we also do have some more good news as well in the fact that Lewis is back on her feet and ready to kick ass once again as our partner. With the mayor's event taking place in the city, we have another patrol gig. But also, since our therapist hasn't shown up for a while at work, we decide to pay her a visit at home as well. Now, when we reach her, apparently all of her work has been stolen, and she was scared that her knowledge made her a target for termination. Oh, wait, damn, sorry, wrong IP. However, the fact that they were stolen very much narrows down the accomplice, as not many people have access to her files, only OCP. However, her computer has been fitted with a tracking device, so we can scan for the signal and get to work. Well, I say get to work, unfortunately the hotel is then raided by the same goons from the prison. They have also set the entire hotel on fire, so we need to fight our way through burning rooms, protecting the doctor and getting her to safety. However, the good doctor isn't the only thing in need of saving, as when we storm the halls we hear the wails of a cat, and since we would do anything for a cat's well-being, we break through the door, the cat escapes the inferno, and we unlock our next achievement a real hero. Game of the year right here, simple as. We thankfully push our way outside and get the doctor to safety before going after the signal ourselves. Now for some reason the signal has us going to the sewers. Hopefully our nose receptors aren't working as I imagine it would be quite the stink. However, we continue. We find signs of foul play as well as more mercenaries. So as per usual, we start to throw our way through them. We also find some new problems though, turrets. Now these things can absolutely shred your health. However, thankfully they are hacked 
hackable. In fact, we hack the very first one that we find and from that unlock our next achievement as well may be used against you. And you have to also give credit to the names of the achievements here, wonderfully done. We eventually find a war room in the sewers and it appears that OCP have been the ones paying Wendell, which quite frankly isn't on. So enough faffing with some damning proof, we decide to storm OCP headquarters and question the old man himself on all of this. When we head to his conference room to question him on afterlife, the room is totally empty. Odd, but even odder is that the TVs then immediately turn themselves on and give us a lovely advert for afterlife, promising that death is no longer a thing with this wonderful new advancement. Deciding that's not enough though, we head to the old man's office, but instead of the old man, Max is in the chair. He flips on the news to show that the old man has actually passed away. God, I hope he doesn't come back, that would be awkward. Anyway, with his death though, Max is now in control of OCP, and he shows his dominance immediately. Now, you leave. Bitches, come! <laughs> absolutely wild. But he then tells us that we have to go to an expo to show off OCP's newest tech, so that'll be fun. However, for now, we just unlock the next achievement cashing out for completing the mission. We're rapidly approaching the end of the game now, folks, so let's crack on and continue. At the expo, we take the podium next to this rather beefy droid. The expo begins and Max immediately unveils his UEDs, the new police force that can do the job admirably and with absolutely no problems, except when it immediately recognises Max as a danger, and of course, we have to say him from the angry robot droids. It wasn't just that droid though, as apparently all of them have gone apeshit. So with many droids that need their plugs removed, we now have to go through room upon room of them until we secure the expo again. It's honestly fairly easy as there are so many incredible guns just lying around here. However, once again, we find and have to fight another ED-209. Oh joy. This time though, it goes a lot smoother since we have incredible weapons and we find a nice little spot in which we just simply can't be shot. So without too much trouble, it goes down once again. In the next room, Wendell of course makes his appearance again. It turns out that he has had control of the droids all along and was the reason that they all went mental. Time to chase after him once again. Unfortunately, however, he does get the upper hand on us as we glitch out once again and wake up on a meat hook. Now, since this isn't dead by daylight, we can't just joink ourselves off and we just have to hear yet another another monologue from Wendell, saying that the chip that we had installed at the start of the game is in fact bogus, because of course it is, and it was implanted to make sure that we couldn't touch Wendell, and now it's activated, with his lighter being what activated every glitch that we had. He runs away like the coward he is, and we then wake up again in the police station with all of our friends around us. With us needing to get this chip out of our brain immediately, Pickles makes a daring return to rip it out of our head, separating us from the commands that stop us from acting on Wendell. With the police not really working anymore and the entire city burning as a result, we need to put an end to this and end it now. Thanks to some great intelligence, we find out that Wendell is hiding in a small shanty town of sorts in one of the skyscrapers behind it. He seems to be getting more powerful and stronger with every day that passes, and he's quite frankly had enough of us, so he goes for his lighter to activate the kill switch. However, of course, since it's no longer in our brain, it doesn't work and we now have to fight through the usual to get to him. Now, honestly, the difficulty has definitely ramped up from the last couple couple of missions, but I can't say it's done in the best way. They just throw more enemies at you with more health and more armour, and call that a difficulty tweak, which I never really enjoy in games. However, it doesn't stop us from pushing through. About half an hour later, we once again reach Wendell, and since he forgot to pay his mercenaries, they also just quit on the spot. With no backup and a surprising lack of hand, Wendell is on his uppers, and it's time to end this once and for all. Wendell gives one last ditch effort, however, we're simply constructed in a manner that most would call rare at best, and we shoot him off the ledge, thankfully, to his death. With that, our job is done, and we unlock the next achievement, not arresting you anymore. Now, thankfully, the city can rest and rebuild. Everything shall return to normal. How wonderful. Well, it would be if that was actually the case, but apparently something has happened at OCP headquarters, and people are getting slaughtered there. We rock up to put an end to it and to see what the fuss is about. We then find Max, and he is in a rather shocking and totally not obvious predicament. The mech suit from earlier has returned with the ghost of old man in its wires. I mean, nobody saw that coming at all. Why do I feel like it's going to be the old man in a gigantic mech hell? suit? However, the old man does us a big favour and immediately breaks Max's neck, which, I mean, is totally wonderful, and he has my full support. But when he tends the gun on us, we decide that that's actually not too cricket. So, of course, we have to shut this robot down also. Now, honestly, the old man here is an absolute tank. However, the fight is quite fun. We just have to chip away at him until we crash through the floors level by level. After many minutes fighting and hundreds of bullets thrown at the old man's pair, 
Mason, we eventually make it to the ground floor where we decide to shut this down for good. With a couple more shots from the pistol, the roof collapses on top of the mech and we take great pride in performing a fatality on this bitch. Fatality. Robocop wins. With the old man down, now we have completed all that needs to be done and the city is much safer. We emerge out of the rubble victorious and the game ends with a news broadcast on all of the things that happened to the people that we met along the way. It's actually quite nice. However, with that, Robocop reigns supreme and we unlock the final achievement, Nice Shooting Son. Now, honestly, Robocop was a complete surprise to me. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did. It does have its problems, don't get me wrong, but my lord, this was such an incredibly fun experience for me. So let's go to talk about it as for now the grind is over so yeah, Robocop was a lot more fun than I was expecting. The gunplay was amazing, the movement and the style were fantastic, and this game also has quite a lot to do and quite a lot of funny points as well. The devs really knew what kind of game this needed to be, and for the most part, they did a really good job of it. Now, there are a couple of issues that I have. Firstly, the frames, of course. It wasn't game-breaking, but the frame rates going mental at key points in the campaign was slightly annoying. However, I am sure that this will be optimised soon. I will also say that the story wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. It had its great moments for sure, don't get me wrong, but essentially we were just chasing the same two or three people until we glitched and just have to do it again. And also the final boss was extremely predictable and felt quite glued on to the end. However, other than that, it is a game that I would absolutely recommend to anyone as it's a short but hilariously fun journey for the 100%. So with that, let's get to the stats. For Robocop, it took us just over 12 hours to get all 27 achievements that this game has to offer. Now that may seem short and it sort of is but after the first mission i also did no more side missions as there was no achievements related to them so there is definitely more content than it seems with my 12 hour completion time for my rating of the game i'm going to be giving it a solid and well-earned 7.5 out of 10 room for improvement for sure however this is a fantastic game still that i would recommend to anybody especially fans of the film as this game has some fantastic fan service i can't lie for difficulty of the achievements however i'm going to be giving it a simple two with no collection no real challenges other than the kill the murder bots in 10 minutes achievement, I see no doubt that anybody can get this 100%. So yeah, another great easy game for those who want to get another 100% in that catalogue. And the hardest achievement of course will also be given to there can be only one, as that was the only real achievement that I had to even focus on. But there we go, that's Robocop, and with my covering this and previously Aliens Colonial Marines, I wonder what 80s icon will grace the next achievement grind. I guess we'll have to see. However for now, thank you all so so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for more achievement and trophy related content. Also, don't forget to swing by my Twitch as well, where we go for the Achievement Grinds live. It would be lovely to see you there as always. And a massive thank you to my Patreons once again for their continued support. With special thanks to Ajaffa Boyo, Ash, Baron Dreadhill, Cash, Cobble, Danny Doug, Desty, The Wolverine Cool 23, Henry, Inductive Gaming, Loki Mischief, Luna Get Good, Lida, Maumi Seeks, Marental, Nuki, Pick Prince, Sean the Sheep, and Will Sniffs. You are all the the absolute best so thank you very much however once again folks thank you all so much for watching i shall see you all next time so until then take care bye bye for now